can have the fastest legs or the strongest arms. But are you ready for a game where all that matters is the speed of your mind and the power of your imagination? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night wherever you are around the world. Welcome to Wizards of the Coast's exclusive coverage of the final match of the Pro Tour season. Magic the Gathering. All you need to play is a brain, a deck and a friend. Hundreds are currently in the city to do battle in the card trading game Magic. And as Ryan Shields discovered, they take it very seriously. I'd say the first round goes to the ore. Magic the Gathering, the trading card game. I think over this past year and a half and like playing it more and more like yeah like at this point I you know, I'm proud like if you I play magic yeah that's who I am that's part of who I am um, but you know when you're trying to you know impress a girl who you're first starting to date uh, you're not always sure how she's gonna react to that um, so yeah that's that's kind of a funny uh, I, I did Admittedly, I did hide them from her for the first few weeks that we were dating because uh, I wasn't sure how she was going to react to it. And I, uh, I really wanted her to make sure she actually liked me and would stick around. <laughs> the Grand Prix is uh, held over the course of two days. So Saturday, typically you're going to be there 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, your first rounds uh, are going to start relatively early. Um, and you're going to play nine rounds of Magic on Saturday. Um, and then that's typically going to take you till about 7 or 8 p.m. at night. Um, and then you're going to come back on Sunday and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to play six rounds of Magic on Sunday. Uh, and then it's going to cut to the top eight after that. So it's full weekends. It's very long and uh, it's definitely a grind. Uh, it's really mentally taxing to be focusing for that long. Uh, uh, I remember after Vancouver, I was just exhausted, but uh, hopefully learn some lessons on, you know, self-care, like tournament preparation, that kind of thing that I can take into this next one. I had been exposed to Magic probably four years ago. My brother used to play with some of our neighbor kids, and I sort of kind of got involved, like played with, around with the cards a little bit and thought they were kind of cool. I started playing because uh, I work at a summer camp during the summer and the kids there, um, Magic is huge for them. They love playing Magic. I went for a while playing with them and sort of kind of dipped my feet into the water of playing, uh, started buying some of my own cards, playing outside of sort of the, the camp setting uh, and it was just hooked immediately. It was just, it's such a great game and it's just really addictive and you just want to keep uh, diving deeper and deeper into it. All right, Grand Prix Portland players, at this time I'd like to welcome you to round number one. You have 50 minutes. Please begin. The game itself is very polished and very, uh, very well laid out. It sort of combines the skill aspect that you might see in, in chess with um, a definitely a luck aspect, uh, like poker perhaps. Um, is, those are sort of the, the fusion that I've heard it described as before. So in that way, it is sort of a, a really interesting fusion of, um, of luck and with skill. As much as I enjoy, you know, just playing for fun and playing with friends, like I love that stuff, but what really drives me to the game is playing competitively. Uh, I'm a super competitive guy just in general, you know, sp growing up playing sports, you know, I could do anything in academics, you know, you always, I would always like strive to be the best at something. And this is sort of just another outlet that, you know, I can, I have a very clear, you know, opponent there's a very clear winner and loser, and you want to be the winner at the end of the day. Um, once I sort of found that aspect of it, you know, I became a lot more confident, um, not only you know, telling people that I was playing Magic, but playing Magic myself. You know, I became a more confident player um, as I started to see, you know, hey, I can like, you know, these players are really good, but I can hang with them. It's a really good outlet for me to be competitive and also just to have fun. When you travel or you compete in a bigger tournament where the stakes are higher, um, you know, there's no room for error. It's your opponent's not going to have any mercy if you make a mistake, just as you won't with them because, you know, in a lot of these cases, there's money on the line. There's, you know, 
um, prizes, other prizes on the line that um, you're there to compete for because you're at the end of the day you're there to win um, when you're heading to these bigger tournaments, especially. They're expecting between 1,000 and 1,500 people to be playing, and like I said, just as with GP Vancouver, there's going to be more people there. Uh, it's just going to be an awesome weekend, awesome celebration of Magic, tons of things to do, and uh, hopefully we're going to be uh, doing well, and I'll uh, you know, play well and place place well. Hopefully, uh, that'd be that'd be really cool. At the end of the day, it is it's an expensive hobby, and uh, people who get really deep into it. It means a lot to them um, that they're willing to put, you know, this time and money into this hobby. Um, and I think, you know, people, whether you're playing for fun, whether you're playing to be super competitive, you know, there's something there for everyone. Um, if you're in, like, if the game really appeals to you, and that's, you know, how you want to spend your time.